number of people in the companies one or two years old is half of what it was in the 1970s as a per capita basis. We are simply not as broadly adventurous and capitalistic as we used to be. Why not? Well, for one thing, there are no capital reserves. You can't even raise enough money to start a barbershop. You ask, how much money do you have in reserve? And a third of Americans can't put together $500. You know, this is not a healthy system that we've developed. And the growth rate of the US economy has slowed more than people realize that the productivity component has slowed down from 1.8 to about 0.9 for the last 15 years, point nine. Things have started to fall, which no one is seeing, however. The chief economists cannot stay silent and see this order breaking off. The trouble started years ago, and now the catastrophe has reached its climax. Now, as Jeremy Grantham said, people will see themselves how things will turn out. Some of the worst incidents are happening, pointing towards something harsher than collapse. Bubbles are reaching near breaking points, and already, people don't have any savings for the worst times ahead. Yes, trouble has begun, but no one is really paying attention to it. Perhaps conflicts like the Ukraine-Russia ones have been introduced so people can stay busy thinking about them, ignoring the worst brewing now. But who is Jeremy Grantham? Well, he is a famous British investor, co-founder, and chief investment strategist of Grantham, Mayo and Van Otterloo, a Boston-based asset management firm. This 84-year-old investor is seeing what most of us are missing. Let's listen to what he has to say. First, Jeremy Grantham talked about the forming and breaking of great bubbles. But what does he mean by that? For that, you should see what's happening in the market. The prices of assets and commodities had reached the maximum possible levels, which no one could imagine. Even prices of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin skyrocketed and reached about $70,000. Prices of stocks, index funds, and even commodities like gold and silver also liked. But what's happening now? Well, the prices have now started to decline at an abnormal level. We can see that even S&P 500 is down in the stock market, Dow Jones is down, and cryptocurrencies have started to collapse. That's what Jeremy Grantham says, bubbles are formed and broken. Every 20 years, bubbles are formed and then pop, bringing everything down. As Jeremy Grantham said, these bubbles can sometimes take less than 20 years to inflate and then get popped. The bubble we are having now has taken only 14 years, which shows how catastrophic it can be. First, the prices of assets and commodities reach the highest levels, after which the prices start to decline until the commodity collapses. That has been happening for centuries in the market and will continue to happen. However, something has changed earlier. These bubbles took decades to form, but now the time period they need is shrinking. In other words, this means that our market has formed itself in such a way that it cannot keep a bubble aside for many years. Perhaps one decade is the maximum time a bubble can be prevented, which shows how vulnerable our markets have become. But why is this the case? Well, it's due to the fact that we have become less capitalists, on which we will talk within a few minutes. But first, let's know why Jeremy Grantham thinks these bubbles have also come and gone in the past. Here's a little reminder to like the video if you were loving it. And if you don't want to miss videos about the evolving economics and the financial order, subscribe to our channel. Let's continue now. Jeremy Grantham said we always try to discover the bubbles created due to crazy investors' behavior. In other words, not all bubbles can lead to disasters where people will be deprived of necessities. Rather, some bubbles that take only a few years to form are deadly and can bring disastrous collapses. Grantham said that when investors are too bullish about an asset, they put their everything on, making it more like gambling. And when you make investing an act of gambling, the consequences you get are like that of gambling and that you win everything or lose everything you have got. Grantham said this happened in the 1929 bubble, Japan's 1989 bubble, then in the 2000 tech bubble, and later in the 2007 housing bubble in the US. In all these bubbles, one thing was similar. Investors had crazy behavior, which they are having now. That's the reason why Jeremy Grantham thinks we are in trouble. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, mean stocks like AMC and GameStop, and even QuantumScape showed an exceptional acceleration in price in 2020. NASDAQ was up 60% after the COVID era, which shows how crazy the investors were. However, the inevitable has already started, and prices of all these assets have started to decline. Nothing can prevent their prices from falling, and that's how this bubble will burst. 
prices will keep declining as they happened in all the past bubbles until they reach the lowest levels. Perhaps some commodities will even collapse too. Listen to what Jeremy Grantham said. I think the forming and breaking of the great bubbles are really the only thing that really matters in uh, equity management. Rest of the time, show up, keep your nose clean, make a point or two, lose a point or two. It doesn't really matter. But once in a blue moon, typically every 20 years, but more recently, a little more frequently than that, you have these bubbles. They form over a number of years, they dominate everything, and then they break. And once again, they dominate everything. It really does matter. And if you can bring yourself to sidestep some of the pain, it can make a lot of difference. I don't think the bubbles are hard to spot, but that is my specialty. I look at the handful of real McCoy bubbles, the type that have really crazy investor behavior, that have masses of enthusiasm, and they stand out like a sore thumb. 1929, the 2000 tech bubble, the 2007 housing bubble in the US, Japan, in 1989, both land and housing and the stock market, probably the biggest bubbles of both the equity market and the real estate market in the history of man. So they are the real McCoy. And then there's an interesting almost case of 1972, the Nifty 50. It didn't go quite as high. And it wasn't quite as silly, but it was on the cusp of oil crises and so on, so that it went down a whole lot. It went down every bit as much as some of the others. A 62% decline adjusted for inflation in 1973-74. Still the biggest decline since the 1930s. So that's my universe. And here we are. We have checked off all of the indicators that are unique to those handful of events. Crazy behavior, check, check. The Bitcoins of the world and the cryptocurrencies. The meme stocks of the AMC uh, GameStop variety. I could even add my quantum scape and uh, very rapid acceleration the prior year in uh, 2020, where the NASDAQ more than doubled in the year. And even from the beginning, pre-COVID was up almost 60%, up almost 60% despite a huge wipeout from COVID. So rapid acceleration is a characteristic you have to see, crazy behavior you have to see. And then there is a unique and special case and that is on the upside, and that's important. On the upside, the blue chips start to win. And the stocks with very high volatility that normally go up one and a half or two times the blue chips, they don't even get the sign right and they start to go down. 1929, the specs, the really crazy stocks went down all year. Little known fact, but they did. The day before the crash, they were down 30% as an index. Nothing like that happened again until 1972. 1972, in the Nifty 50, the S&P went up 17, and the average big board stock went down 17, so that I could remember it forever, symmetry. Nothing like that happened again until 2000. And then in 2000, in the tech bubble, the dot-coms peeled off in March and really collapsed. And then through the summer, the junior growth, the medium growth, and then finally the senior growth all peeled off and by the early fall, most of them were down 50%, and some of the dot-coms were down a lot more, but the S&P was unchanged, which meant that the 70% that was not growth had gone up 18%. So the S&P blue chips had gone up 18, and the growth and the NASDAQ and the dot-coms had taken a very big hit. That is absolutely classic. Now, starting early last year, one by one, the various most speculative groups that had done brilliantly in 2020 started to do bad. These great bubbles have nothing to do, very, very little to do with the underlying reality. That started in 2020, December, and then the meme stock started March, April, and um, Bitcoin, April, May, June, and so on. And then one by one, most of the advanced techie stocks started to come down and ARK peaked out a couple of months later and has, of course, declined 75%. ARK is a whole portfolio of 25 growth stocks that often have no earnings, but do have, at least in the portfolio manager's belief, huge prospects. But that kind of stock is very vulnerable to a loss of confidence. And therefore it started the decline pretty early and continues today right into the teeth of the seller. So this market has been proceeding eerily like 2000. And I think 
phase one, superficially, you have a 2000 tech bubble. Horribly overpriced, much too much enthusiasm, huge buy-in by individuals, fueled by a massive program of cash distribution associated with COVID bailout. A lot of that found its way into the stock market. So this was sensational. So that's phase one. Phase two, which I really worry about, is this whole thing morphing into what I call the 1970s, underlying inflation as an everyday topic once again. It may not be spiking in the 70s. It came and went, came and went, came. It was always part of the background discussion. And uh, that's what I think it will be now for quite a long time, several years. And similarly, interest rates were always a worry in the 1970s, and they will be a worry for quite a few years to come. Beyond that, longer term, I worry that we are fairly deep into running out of the cheapest, most available resources. I think that turning point was 2002. Between 1900 and 2002, the average important commodity came down 70% in real price adjusted for inflation. And we keep our own index at GMO, 36 most important equal weighted commodities. This is not dominated by oil. This is looking at the breadth of what is happening to commodities. And then if you look at that again today, it is not down 70%, it's down 10% since 1900, a rounding error. So it's gone from down 70 or 30 on an index basis to 90. It has tripled since 2002. The average important commodity has tripled in real terms since 2002. And that's not the end. The worst is yet to come. Jeremy Grantham said that we don't have lithium, copper, nickel, cobalt, and silicon reserves on which our future markets could work. However, we need more and more products. We want to produce more batteries. We want to go electric and bring in the green revolution, which won't be possible if we don't have the metal that can build our future. Yet the capitalistic system is already under threat because we neither have capital reserves nor have the great workforce we had in the past. Producing products and goods that could be exported and imported can become just a dream because manifesting it will no longer be possible. The world has to forget the time when countries would trade and sell and buy the best products from each other. Populations of the most populated countries like China are declining and simply in the future, they won't have a sufficient workforce that could produce the demanded products. When that's the situation of a country like China, you can imagine what it would be the situation like in other countries like the US and European countries. And yet, conflicts and wars like that of Russia and Ukraine have started, which are ushering in an energy crisis and triggering inflation simultaneously. Surprisingly, we may even have to face famines because Russia and Ukraine are the biggest crop producers. Without them, the world would be starved because, at this moment, we are using the earlier yields we don't get know how it is when we cannot find food in the supermarkets. Today, households don't have savings because they spent them during COVID-19, while the leftover was spent during a time of high inflation. However, people didn't know that inflation was not the end. It was a start, and high inflation was yet to unfold. Now during the time when the prices of assets and commodities are declining while prices of necessities are increasing, people don't have money to buy them. People are unaware that this time, the bubble won't bring the prices of goods and products down. Rather, the prices will skyrocket while people won't have money to buy them. Listen to what Jeremy Grantham said about that. We haven't done any capex. There are no great reserves of copper, lithium, cobalt, nickel, etc., waiting to crush onto the market. And yet we need them to green the economy. We're simply going to run light of these metals. We need technology to design a way around them, new batteries that don't use so much, recycling techniques to save what we have, etc., etc. We have bad actors around the world, as we see in the Ukraine with Russia. An unstable situation such as this that we are likely to see with food does not bode well. The other thing we have to bear in mind is that the developed world in China is beginning to run out of people. In any developed country except Israel, we're not replacing our people, and nor is China. We're all collectively uh, having a fertility rate uh, as we sit of about 1.6, and we need 2.1 to replace. So each cohort of babies is running now about a quarter below replacement. So if you're running out of labor, and we have been for quite a few years, so we know that the cohorts of 20 year olds starting now will be declining, guaranteed over the next 20 years. 
So you have a shortage of labor, which feels inflationary. You have a shortage of cheap, plentiful resources, metals, food, which feels inflationary. And you have a very tricky, complicated situation on which we could spend an hour on energy as we try and transition from uh, fossil fuels to green. And we will be lucky if that is not inflationary. It may not be, but it may be. So all in all, we face some very intractable inflationary problem that we have not faced. It's one thing squeezing your labor for the odd five or 10 years. We've been squeezing our labor since 75. That's 25, 35, 47 years. And a lot of that is not profitable in any way. They are losing the ability to be healthy, viable members of the economic society, some of them. And if you look at the growth rate of the US economy, Yes, it's had a very flashy top 10%. The FANGs are brilliant enterprises, probably a better handful of companies than we ever had at any time before in terms of their unique ability to move fast and make new ideas. But if you look down, further down the system, you find the level of new enterprises undertaken in the US is way down. The number of people in companies one or two years old is half of what it was in the 1970s as per capita basis. We are simply not as broadly adventurous and capitalistic as we used to be. Why not? Well, for one thing, there are no capital reserves. You can't even raise enough money to start a barbershop. You ask, how much money do you have in reserve? And a third of Americans can't put together $500. You know, this is not a healthy system that we've developed. And the growth rate of the U.S. economy has slowed more than people realize that the productivity component has slowed down from 1.8 to about 0.9 for the last 15 years, 0.9. Now, it's still semi-dignified, but 1.8 compounds a whole lot better. And the problem there is you add to productivity, you add the increase in the workforce. And back in the 60s, you were adding 1.5% a year to the workforce. In the next 20 years, we'll be lucky if we only subtract 0.2%. So we've had an enormous drop of 1.7% a year in labor, and maybe more. And we've had a pretty steady drop of 0.9% in productivity. This is indicative that all is not healthy. And I think the central poison to the system is a blinding increase in inequality. And what do you think? How difficult will the situation be when all these deadly problems will bend together? Are you preparing for such a time when prices of goods will increase while savings will not be enough? Comment your opinions in the comment section right below. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel for more videos on the latest economics and financial news. Until the next video, stay tuned.